This video is going to introduce you to the basics of drawing shapes in the paint program. You'll discover that the skills you learn in the paint program for drawing shapes will apply to other programs that you'll use later, like even drawing basic shapes in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. The shapes are located on the home ribbon. We're going to start off by learning how to draw lines. You need to master these shapes in a particular order. So when we click on the line tool, and we bring our mouse down into the drawing area, you'll notice that the mouse looks like a plus sign with a little circle in the middle. This shape is called a crosshairs. You simply place the crosshairs where you want the line you're about to draw to begin. Click and hold and pull the mouse to where you want the line to end. When you release the mouse, you will have drawn a line. Now if you notice the line is a, a particular thickness, and that thickness comes from this size drop down right here. In paint there are four thicknesses of lines available. Remember, paint is a free program. When you get into drawing programs that you actually pay money for, you'll find hundreds of sizes of thicknesses of the lines. But in paint we just have four. So I'm going to choose the thinnest line. Now since this line is still selected, see the handles, the little squares on the corners of the line? I can actually change, make changes to this particular line from thick to a little thinner, a little thinner, and the thinnest. Once, however, I have left that line and clicked somewhere else, I can't change that line in this program anymore. I'm going to go ahead and choose the thickest line, and this time I'm also going to choose color 1, red. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click and hold and draw another line. And then I'm going to go ahead and click off of that line. This time I'm going to choose leave color 1 as red, and for color 2 I'm going to choose green. This will enable me to actually draw a red line with my left mouse button and a green line with my right mouse button. If you notice, it's very difficult to get the lines to be perfectly straight. To make a perfectly straight line, hold down your shift key and then draw the line. And the line you draw will be either perfectly horizontal perfectly straight or at a perfect 45 degree angle. A little bit of a delay there, let me try that again. So you're going to hold down the shift key and then draw the line and the line you draw will be perfectly horizontal, perfectly vertical, or at a perfect 45 degree angle. Once you've mastered lines, you can move on to rectangles. The rectangle tool is the fourth shape from the left. I'm going to go ahead and click on the rectangle tool. Now, as far as the size of the outline of the rectangle, I'm using the same drop-down, and I have four different sizes for the thickness of the border available to me. The outline of the rectangle, and any shape for that matter, can now be made up of different mediums. So you'll notice that I could have solid color, a crayon, a marker, oil, natural pencil, or a watercolor. With the thin borders, I'm barely going to be able to tell the difference between the mediums but with the thicker borders, I'm going to be able to see some differences. But these mediums come into play with the fill. You notice that my fill also could be solid color, crayon, marker, oil, natural pencil, or watercolor. So for this first example, I'm going to leave it on, on uh, solid color for the outline and no fill for the inside. So since I have col color one chose as, selected as red, I'm going to place my mouse down in the drawing area. Again, my mouse looks like a crosshairs. I'm going to place the mouse where I want the rectangle to begin. Click and hold and pull the mouse in a diagonal fashion. When I've reached the other corner, I'm going to go ahead and release, and that will draw my rectangle. If I draw the rectangle with the right mouse button instead of the left mouse button, you'll notice that it's green because I have green selected for color 2. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my drawing area. I'm going to click the File tab, New, and I do not need to save it. So for my next rectangle, I've selected the Rectangle tool. I'm going to use the Fill of Crayon. I'm going to go ahead and choose the, uh, for the color 1, I'm going to choose Gold, and for color 2, I'll choose Black. Then I'm going to go ahead and place my crosshairs in the drawing area, click and hold, and pull. And you'll notice that I have a gold outline 
and a black inside that looks like it's been filled in with a crayon. I'm going to go ahead and change that fill back to solid color. You can see how that changed because this rectangle is still selected. I can continue to make changes to this rectangle until it is no longer selected. I'm going to go ahead and draw another rectangle. This time I'm going to use my right mouse button. You notice when I use the right mouse button, the colors are reversed. And finally, for my next rectangle, I'm going to draw a perfect square. So I'm going to hold down Shift and then draw the square. And you'll notice that it's a perfectly proportioned square. Remember the Shift key. It helps you draw perfectly straight lines, perfectly proportioned squares, circles, and other shapes. Later, it will even assist you with clip art. And so now I'm finally ready to move on to ovals. The oval icon is the third icon in the shapes area. I'm going to go ahead and click it. Notice still my mouse is a crosshairs. When I draw the oval, I simply pretend that the oval is inside of a rectangle. So I place my mouse where the upper left hand corner of the rectangle would be if the oval was in a rectangle. Click and hold and pull. When I let go, you'll actually be able to see that rectangle. So I started here where the corner of the rectangle would be, and I ended down here. It's as if this oval was in a rectangle, and I'm drawing the rectangle. Just like before, if I reverse and draw it with my right mouse button, I'll have a color one for the fill and color two for the border. It allows me to quickly switch between two colors. And finally, if I hold down shift while drawing the oval, it will be a perfect circle. Now, if you've mastered these simple functions for lines, rectangles, and ovals, then you're ready to go on to any of the shapes that the paint program offers. To clean the screen again, I'm going to click the File tab, New, Don't Save. So if I, for example, wanted to draw a lightning bolt. That's in the overflow. I'm going to click this down arrow and find that lightning bolt. I'm going to go ahead and choose gold for both my colors. Well, gold would probably be better than yellow. There we go. I want it to be solid color outline and a solid color fill. Now, if I just simply click and hold and drag, I can change that lightning bolt however I want. But if I hold down shift, no matter how large I make the lightning bolt, it will keep its proportions. And there's that rectangle. So as I was drawing the lightning bolt, I actually started here and ended down here in these two corners. No matter what shape you draw, you want to imagine that the shape is contained inside of a rectangle. You start in one corner, and you move to the opposite corner. So I started here, I end here. And remember, if you want it to keep its proportions, then you need to make sure that you're holding down the Shift key. While holding down Shift, that shape, no matter how large or small you make it, will maintain perfect proportions.